before we get started, I just wanted to point out that this was recorded before the Combine. So some of these guys will probably be moving up, as expected. I will be recording updated target videos following the Combine, as well as 2.0 mocks in the coming days. I hope you enjoy. The third day of the NFL Draft could be a huge opportunity for New England to find some freakish talent to add to their roster and possibly develop into NFL players. At this point, we have to assume they have at least one offensive tackle, possibly two. However, we might see them continue to add to the offensive line at the center and guard position. Likewise, for receivers, New England should have at least one drafted, possibly two. Yet, we could see them looking for some late-round diamonds that could have talents to become solid contributors. Even if the Patriots had grabbed a corner and a safety, I think we could still see the Pats bolster their defensive backfield with physical freaks that can help in specific matchups. The Pats don't have any picks in the 5th round, however, they have 5 in the 6th and 7th. This is where we could finally see them pick up a tight end, a running back, maybe running backs, edge, linebackers, defensive tackles, pick, uh, a kicker, even a punter. For my late round and UDF prospects, I will simply list my targets in each group and will provide a brief background for each player. To conclude, I will point out some of my favorite players. Let's start out with the offensive linemen. The late round offensive linemen targets are a mixture of potential auxiliary tackle picks along with some guard prospects. Tackles could still be a pressing need and the offensive line on block needs bodies. Let's take a look at my targets. Top of the list is another Chattanooga offensive lineman. We have McClendon Curtis, he's a guard tackle prospect. Very physical, super strong, um, had decent senior bowl. Um, I, I I have him. I doubt he'll be there in the sixth. I, I'm I'm starting to concede he might even move up to the fourth after the combine. Just a physical freak, and maybe he's in the fifth. But unfortunately, the Pats don't have a pick there. So um, I wish we can get him. I don't know. Maybe just the board falls that way. But I have to concede that we might not get him. Um, Trevor Reed, tackle from Louisville, super athletic, very quick, fast. He's also tall, really long arms, long reach. Looks solid, maybe just needs to get a little bit bigger and stronger and just get some coaching up. And um, I could see him working both the guard and tackle position. Um, Nick Saldivieri is a guard from Old Dominion. I I think he's listed as a tackle, but I think he's a guard. Well, I don't know. We'll have to see. I think he plays both. Super strong, it looks like. Has some good technique. Definitely the physical side of it. He's probably more of a guard, but... The versatility would be great if, you know, has uh, experience at the tackle position. Luke Haggard, tackle from Indiana. Another potential guard tackle transfer there. Gar uh, Nick Broker, guard from Ole Miss. Didn't have a great senior bowl, really, but could definitely be a contributor if he gets on the team. Wanya Morris is a big, tall tackle from Oklahoma. Big, tall tackle. Had a disappointing senior bowl, I would say, but... Uh, he's got some anthropometric situations there where he's just going to have to work on his functionality and work on his strength. Maybe, I mean, the guy could probably be an NFL player. It's just going to take some work there. Um, Dante Bull, tackle from Fresno State, big dude. Looks to be super strong. Probably needs to work on speed and footwork. He's athletic going forward, but is coming out of his stance, he's a little sluggish. BJ Wilson, guard tackle from Quincy. You have to go digging for this guy, but... He's definitely got some interesting uh, physical attributes. Seems to be very quick and powerful. Dalton Wagner, tackle from Arkansas. Monster of a human being. I believe he's 6'9 and like the low threes, 320, 330. Little stiff. He's super long and tall, so it works out as a right tackle. But I think, again, he's going to, someone that's just going to need to work on their functional strength and just get chained to a squat rack even more. I mean, he's a big, strong dude, but he just needs to be able to work at a lower pad height. Kadeem Telfor, tackle from UAB. Solid prospect there. I don't, we'll have to see how he comes out of his pro days. Same thing with Mark Evans. Robert Mitchell, guard tackle from NC uh, Central. Also another solid prospect. Probably going to be UDFAs, but people that at least should be brought into camp, in my opinion. My late round offensive linemen are project players with some that might be converted to a guard. My favorite here is Cole Strange's former teammate, McClendon Curtis, who could play both guard and tackle. But I have to concede he'd probably be moving up in the draft after the combine. So then I would go with either Trevor Reed or Nick Saldieri in this round. My receiver targets are plentiful, with many of them being underappreciated for their physical attributes. 
I have numerous slot and wideout prospects that could compete for a spot in 52 man if given the chance. Let's take a look at my targets. Leading off to Mario Douglas at Liberty, um, very similar to Tank Dell. It's about the same size, weight, um, obviously a slot guy, very shifty. I mean, the guy literally makes a turn. It doesn't, doesn't even lose a step. Not a, not a mile per hour or a tenth of a mile per hour loss there. Uh, very quick. Uh, the concern there is obviously his size. Although very shifty, uh, I'm not sure if the durability will be there after getting hit so many times. Jake Bobo, UCLA, big, big target. I think he's like 6'5", good hands. Bryce Ford Wheaton is another big guy. Super freak athlete. Very quick, fast. Um, his vert is very impressive and i think it, he's got a massive reach too so he's got i mean he's got some really great highlights underappreciated for sure elijah higgins um he's i think it, he's i would put him as an x and a big slot I, he's, a lot of his great plays were out of the slot so he'd be like a big slot deep slot wherever you want to put that at uh shaq davis um he's from south carolina state another big dude but he's like six five and I think he runs like a 4-4. Four, four. So I, I think 4-4-3 four, four, is what sticks out, I think, as as, as uh, laser time, so FAT. Um, I would say that's if that's all true and his tape shows it, the dude is like might be a legitimate X receiver and major sleeper. Not sure if he's going to get drafted, but um, one of my favorites by far. Uh, Dante Dimas Jr., good X, very fast. Another tall dude. I think he's like 6'4". Uh, big too. Heavy strong. X receiver with also the deep slot potential. Uh, Darius Davis from TCU. He's a smaller um, slot guy. Again, very quick. Very uh, Top end speed is pretty good too. And he's good. I, th I know kick and punt return. I know he does returns. I, I don't know. If, I can't say if it's one or the other or both. Jalen Moreno Cropper out of Fresno State. He's interesting. I his skills are really good, but it's funny that his body type is definitely more for the slot. But he, it's like his best plays appear to be on the on the outside there. So it's like his skill set doesn't match up his body frame. Now, if he can develop that slot technique and maintain that deep slot potential, really good pickup. Allie Jennings the third out of Old Dominion. Nice, solid X potential. Very fast, um, strong. Kashmir Allen is a wide receiver and running back prospect out of UCLA. He didn't get a lot of touches this season, but the, his tape is impressive. Um, very shifty. Played out of the slot a few times. Very impressive. Could be a good pick up at least maybe uh somebody bring him into camp xavier smith wide receiver running back prospect out of florida and a&m he's I, I would say he's a slot but this guy can go deep and he's also got running back potential offensive weapon four threes everything just looks physical freak with some talents just unfortunately flying under the radar right now J.J. Holloman, wide receiver from Tennessee State. Another great ex-candidate. So is J.D. Kiss Bonds, wide receiver from Hampton. I've seen him play. Very, very impressive in terms of his speed. And he's very physical. Super strong. Good hands. Awesome prospect. Nico Rumigio is a slot candidate from Fresno State. He's been under the radar, but I think he's starting to get some traction. I'd, I've started to hear some people mention his name as a great slot candidate in the late rounds. Very quick, fast. I think he's a good punt and kick returner, so great could be a great prospect. He's a little small. He's a slot candidate, but he's he's a little thicker than some of the uh, like Tank Dells and Demario Douglases, those types of guys. He's a little thicker, a little stronger, so might be a great prospect there. Trey Tucker, wide receiver from Cincinnati, underappreciated because, well, Scott is uh, basically the same thing, and he's a little bit better than Trey Tucker, but that, I don't think, I think Trey Tucker should get his own shot. Daywood Davis, wide receiver slash corner from Western Kentucky. I, I All I can say is the guy's sneaky good, very, very good. Um, 
physical, fast, good hands. Could be a great prospect. Even if anything, he's a good special teamer. Jaquan Burton from Florida International. Deep slot. This guy is very fast. Give him a look. Probably really underappreciated. Might not get drafted, but definitely somebody that could be signed as a UDFA. David Durden out of West Florida. You really got to dig for this guy. There's not a lot of tape on him, but the stuff that's out there is very impressive. The numbers look good, too. Um, just, again, just somebody who's just buried, and you got to go digging for him. Hopefully a scout finds him and at least gives him an invite. Justin Marshall out of Buffalo. Another underappreciated potential X slash deep slot receiver. Very fast, physical, strong, explosive, good hands. Just stuck at Buffalo. Ray J. Johnson Sanders, wide receiver out of Troy. Again, just another guy. He's a great X candidate. Just buried at Troy, not getting the limelight. Hopefully he gets an invite. The final rounds of the 2023 draft will still have some imposing defensive backs still on the board that could be solid targets for the Patriots. Let's take a look. Leading off is Cameron Brown, cornerback out of Ohio State. Ultra fast. We're talking high 4-2s, four 4-3s. Four a little stiff. Uh, his back pedal isn't as smooth as he wanted to be, but he could be a great special teamer. And if we just need somebody who's out there to cover the really fast guys, he's not the worst pickup in the sixth or seventh round. Jacorian Bennett, D back out of Maryland. Very versatile. Love him. J Jartavius Martin, quarterback safety out of Illinois. I think he's going to be probably in fourth or fifth round, but if he's there, it wouldn't be a bad pick. Julius Brents, cornerback safety out of Kansas State. The guy's big. I think he's 6'4". Big dude. Awesome safety prospect that can also play cover and corner. I doubt he'll be there in the sixth. He'll probably be a late fourth or maybe fifth rounder. DeMarco Hellams, strong safety out of Alabama. Actually led Alabama with tackles, I believe, this past year. Um, despite having all those tackles, though, he's not the best tackler. So he's kind of fallen on the board. But he, he's there. He makes plays. He gets engaged. I mean, he, his, his vision and his awareness is solid. Dijon Nugget Warren, cornerback out of Jackson State, appears to be a great nickel. Um, but he might be more than that. He's super fast, powerful for his size. Very I, I, Travis Hodges Tomlinson-esque. Christian Young, safety from Arizona. He is big, tall, and fast. Um, I don't know if he's capable of being Rover, but he might be a great option maybe to bring up. Could start off as a special teamer. I think he's got the four. I think he's in the four fours at like 6'2", 6'3", 220 pounds. I mean, he's a physical freak. Um, track star. Worth a look. Arquan Bush, he, Rover safety from Cincinnati. Um, I think he's probably, yeah, he's probably much more of a box guy right now, but, uh, worth a look. Miki Blackman, cornerback from USC. Started off the year for my list. He was way up there and just apparently just losing momentum. So he could be a great pickup in the late rounds. Brandon Hill, safety from Pitt. Uh, very quick, fast, hard hitter. Definitely underappreciated. Uh, I I would put him in the 6th or 7th round. Someone's probably going to pick him up. But if he goes UDFA, no brainer there. Rajon Wright, cornerback from Oregon State. For some reason, he's falling very similar to Blackman. Not sure why. He's got the skill set. He's big. He's tall. He's actually quite fast. Good for good vertical. Um, I don't know if it's just his numbers just don't impress anymore. But going into the season, another guy that was pretty high up on the list. Deshaun Jameson, nickel cornerback from Texas. Very quick and fast. Um, worth a look. Corey Trice, corner from Purdue. Big dude. Um, I know the Patriots are looking for that. I'm not sure if he's worthy of bringing him in, but worth a look. Jaden Woodby, rover safety from Boston College. Um, guy's a freak. Massive, big dude. 
Um, not very tall, but just strong, fast, uh, basically a small linebacker, but he's quick enough to play uh, rover safety. The Jordan Strong, nickel from Coastal Carolina. This guy, you have to go digging for him, but he looks good. Uh, he's got the numbers to, to back it up. His tape is not extensive, but the guy does have some shutdown. His technique is great. Worth the look. Miles Brooks, cornerback from Louisiana Tech. Same thing. You got to go looking for him. But when you, if you do find the numbers and the tape on him, it's enough worth, it's worthy of looking at. Miles Brook, a, a cornerback from Louisiana Tech. Another guy you got to go digging for. But if you find his tape and you look at his numbers, he's definitely worth considering. There are multiple prospects that I like here, and most will find their way to an NFL camp this spring. Cameron Brown is very fast and projected in the 4.3s, which could be beneficial on special teams as well. Brent is a big defensive back, really like him, could play several positions. The Jean Nugget Warren could be a great nickel corner, as well as Deshaun Jameson or DeJordan Strong. Brandon Hill, Jaden Woodby, and Christian Young could be great rovers, along with solid special team contributors. Blackman and Wright are appear to be out of the conversation as top corners, so they might be available later rounds for a value pick. Although I really like several running backs in the early round of this draft, my later round targets are really the ones I think the Patriots should actually target due to their value. We have a mixture of scat backs, big backs, speed backs, all-purpose backs, power backs, and finally even some full backs in the conversation. Let's take a look. Deuce Vaughn, running back out of Kansas State, scat back, very quick, very fast. Um, looking for his combine numbers because he's pretty small. But he's got that Darren Sproles-esque look to him and movements. Kalan Lambo LeBorn. Oh my gosh. Four, I mean, this guy was a former five-star. And going to Florida State. And then I think he got kicked out of the program. And now he's at, went to Marshall. Dude's an all-purpose back. You got to look at his tape. There's not much of it from him at Marshall. But his, you can find some of his Florida State stuff. It's incredible. I hope the Patriots have at least have him on their radar. Tavian Thomas running back. Big dude. My big back. I love this guy. Um, I'm going to say LeGarrette Blunt-esque. The dude's a beast. Chase Brown running back from Illinois. Speed back. I think he's a four, low 4-4s four and he's got good hands. His numbers for as a receiver are solid. Definitely should be on the Patriots radar. Evan Hole, running back from Northwestern. He's been one of my favorites for a long time. He just has the attitude. He's a great scat back. Has a very Danny Woodhead. I love Danny Woodhead, and he just reminds me of him. Just the guy just gets that gets his pads, just runs into it, and he gets what he needs out of the out of the play. He gets the job done. Alright, Darius Hagens, running back from Virginia State. All, great all-purpose dude. Um, his tape is not extensive, but for what I see, he could be at least a great prospect somebody bring in UDFA. Kelvin Tyler Jr., running back from Utah State. Awesome scat back project. Hopefully can bring him in, see what he looks like. Sean Shivers, running back from Indiana. Great scat back, very similar to Deuce Vaughn. Just, I mean, an absolute wrecking ball, but he's super quick, twitchy. Chartavius Whitlow, running back from Western Illinois, super speed back. Could be a great UDFA, super fast, good speed back. Hunter Lukey, fullback from North Dakota State. Um, he's probably one of the few guys you'd actually say is a true fullback. That's his primary job, but he's also kind of the feature back there. He's a big dude, great athlete all around, just not super fast or quick or big or strong. I mean, he's got the skill set. He runs hard. Worthy? Not sure. Let's see. Probably UDFA consideration. Now for one of my favorite guys in the draft, Chris Elmore, fullback, DN, tight end, and guard from Syracuse. Yes. All four of those. Probably going to be a UDFA, but the guy blocked for the be essentially the best running back in program history. So... I, you know, one could say uh, Chris Elmore is probably the reason why Tucker probably had such a great season the last couple of years, but um, the Patriots do need a fullback, and I'm not sure if they really want to bring in a fullback 
exclusively. So a guy who can play on the other side of the ball as well as a tight end and a guard position. That versatility, if you can get four, four positions from one guy, not a bad deal. Finally, we have Jack Coletto, fullback, linebacker out of Oregon State. This guy does play both sides of the ball legitimately. Um, I put him as a fullback because I think that's where he could possibly play at the NFL level. But again, you have a fullback that can play linebacker role, which obviously gives some effort towards him being a uh, great special teams prospect. I really like all the running backs here, but I would probably focus on Deuce Vaughn, even though he's probably going to go in the fourth or fifth round. Lambo LeBourne is one of my top five rough cuts this year. Um, he's very Barry Sanders-esque. Like him, Tavian Thomas is a solid big back option. Chase Brown's incredibly quick and fast with great hands. Um, Evan Hole would be another great option. Good scat back. And then for fullbacks, I would probably go with Elmore or Coletto there. The day three tight ends is a small class, but I think it's essential that the Patriots take at least one of these guys to bring in some big end zone targets and or blocking support for the line. Let's go over the list. Zach Kuntz, tight end from Old Dominion. Big, tall, 6'8", I believe. Dude's uh, mid-200s, but I think he's supposed to run like a 4'5 or a 4'6". If you watch his tape, he plays basically in every receiver option. The dude is insane. Josh Wiley, uh, basically the same thing as Zach Kuntz. Big, tall, fast, can play multiple uh, receiver positions. Will Mallory, tight end from Miami. Another athletic tight end could play in multiple positions, but definitely has better blocking. Luke Schoonmaker is a awesome tight end out of Michigan. A little underappreciated, I think, um, especially considering he's one of the best inline tight ends in the draft. Cameron Latu is a tight end edge combo from Alabama. Could be a versatile pick. Again, he's Alabama, so maybe O'Brien wants to bring him along. Kamori Gamble, tight end out of UCF, is another diamond in the rough. He's like 6'4", not really big. He's got good skills, great hands, very quick. I think he's like a 4'5". Now, when you watch him, all I see is a cheaper Jonah Smith. I'm telling you. UDFA, bring him in. All these tight ends could be operative for the Patriots. Um, I really like Zach Kuntz, but he did get injured last year. Wiley is probably going to go in the fourth or fifth round. Mallory should be there. Schoonmaker might go in the fifth, but he might be there in the sixth. Latu is all over the board. I think people are catching on on him. Um, I I don't have him going. I, I wouldn't pick him higher up in the draft. I mean, he's good, but I don't think he's worthy of anything probably above a sixth round. And then Kamori Gamble, I wouldn't mind if they really brought that guy in. I, I don't think he's worth a draft pick. I'm sorry, I like the guy, but maybe Kamori coming in on the UDFA deal would be great. Defensive ends slash edge. My late round D-end edge guys are really unique talents that could be serious contenders for the 52-man thanks to their physical talents and position versatility. I like Isaiah Land. Edge from Florida A&M. He is climbing up the board at an alarming rate. His, his combine numbers are going to blow him up the board. I, there's already people already on that already. They're starting to move him up and you know before the combine numbers get out. Same thing with Dylan Horton, another physical freak. He's a D-end, comes in, very fast and powerful. B.J. Thompson, another physical freak. Very similar to Isaiah Land. Him and Land are like essentially better Andre. I shouldn't say better. They're better value picks than uh, Andre Carter. So if you like Andre Carter and how he plays, these guys are very similar. Derek Parrish, D-line edge fullback from Houston. The guy just looks like a machine and he plays like it. His strength numbers are... I, elite, they're elite, yeah. They're elite strength numbers, and there's not too much on him playing fullback, but his D-line and edge num uh, tape is awesome. Uh, Jason Dumas, who is a D-end fullback from Southern, 
big dude. I mean, this guy, he's a D end, but you know, I, he's not a nine. I, he might be like, he could be a five, a five technique dude. Um, he's f fullback too. Um, interesting numbers there too. I mean, the guy's a good blocker. He didn't carry the ball much, but again, both sides of the ball and the guy's a fullback. Again, the Patriots, I don't think are going to spend the whole entire draft, um, whole spot on the roster for a fullback. So if they find Dumas is good on the other side of the ball, he might be worthy of uh, at least a UDFA. Isaiah Mullins, DN from Wisconsin. Definitely underappreciated. Big dude, super strong. Um, true DN, too. Yaya Diaby. I don't know what's going on. He, This guy... I don't know why he's not higher up on the board. The guy is a defensive edge player. He plays up and upright and down and uh, on the end. Uh, you know, seven, eight, nine guy. He's from Louisville. Physical freak. I think he had like nine sacks last season. I'm. I don't. I, I think the combine's gonna move him up. But right now, like if you look at, it, he's like they're coming in at maybe at fifth, sixth, or seventh round. Some people even have him as a UDFA. I doubt it. After the combine, Julius Welshoff, edge from Michigan, good UDFA target, super physically, an absolute freak, just raw. He just needs some time and somebody to show him what to do. Zeus Gibbs out of Townsend, the guy just needs a shot. He got injured. I think he got an Achilles injury a couple years ago or a year ago. Um, so I don't, his tape isn't really that strong right now, but. Very aggressive, worth a shot. Maybe, obviously, a UDFA situation. Brevin Allen, DN from Campbell, another physical freak, UDFA prospect. Andrew Farmer, DN from Lane, another UDFA prospect. Give him a shot. Out of all these guys, like I said, probably Isaiah Land or BJ Thompson because he, they're just essentially better valued Andre Carters in the late rounds. Um, again, though, I expect their combine numbers will probably move them up into the fifth, if not even higher. So I'm probably looking at Dylan Horton or Yaya here. Um, they're great DNs. I also wouldn't mind if they took Parrish or Dumas just because they're, they can play both interior and on the outside, plus their fullbacks. Linebackers. Oh, here we go. So linebackers. Late round guys are a mix of talents. They could find a spot on the roster either through development, position type, or special teams. Muhammad Diabati, linebacker from Utah. Former uh, linebacker from Florida. This guy is, again, very similar to Yaya. I don't know what happened, but the guy's a physical freak. He's all over the place, super strong, fast, got good technique. I just... Maybe he went to Utah and fell off. I don't know what it is, or at least the radar. Not how he played. He played great. Um, Nick Hampton, he's a linebacker edge from Appalachian State. Tampa 2 Mike, easy. Easy Tampa 2 Mike. Aubrey Miller, Jackson State. Will Backer, looks solid. D. Winters from TCU. I think he's one of those guys who had great college numbers, but no one was thinking that he's some, some sort of great NFL player, but then now you have to look at like how he played, and the guy is a machine. Definitely worth the consideration in terms of a draft in the fifth, sixth, or seventh round. Abraham Boplan, oh my gosh, linebacker uh, from Marshall, super great coverage uh, linebacker, very quick, long. He's basically an oversized corner. Titus Leo. Another one of those guys who's my one of my favorites. I, I've labeled him a box back because the guy can play linebacker, D end, and a corner. I mean, this guy's a freak. Um, all over the place. Can play all of them. He, I think he was at the Shrine Bowl. I, I didn't hear too much from him coming. I mean, much about him coming out of the Shrine Bowl. Obviously, the coaches saw something there. Not sure if he's got an invitation to the Combine. I'll see what happens. But if not... Someone I, someone on the scouts, is that the word has to be out that that guy can play ball. Um, Tyler Murray, great rover linebacker combo from Memphis. Super fast, powerful. Could be a great special teams contributor. 
Carlton Marshall is, quote, my nickelbacker from Troy. He is really, like, half and half. He's essentially a half nickelback, half sandbacker. Why? Because he's, like, 5'8", super shifty, super fast, accelerates, can get to the ball in, in a blink of an eye. But he's built like a, a linebacker in terms of his thickness and strength. Um, and he can hit. He's got good vision. He sheds blocks better than anybody I've really ever seen. I'm not joking. Like the guy can just get away because he's well, he's five eight, so he just runs basically right past. Um, he runs right past the tackles. I think the five eight part is gonna probably hurt his draft prospects, and he's probably gonna go UDFA, and hopefully at least gets an invite someplace. I hope the guy can play. Cam Bright, linebacker from Washington, great special teams pickup. And then Jeremy Banks, also outside linebacker from Tennessee, another special teams pickup. If I had to pick anybody, it'd probably be like maybe Diabate or Nick Hampton. Um, I also like Titus Leo and Carlton Marshall, but not sure how they're going to make it to the NFL. My D-line prospects are all sleepers with big upside. These guys are all incredible athletes with big motors that are probably all priority UDFAs, but their combines and pro days along with their thin class might move them into the late rounds at this point. I have Elijah Chapman, D-line from SMU, Jordan Jefferson, West Virginia, Dion Bergen, D-tackle from Wake Forest, Elijah Simmons, huge nose tackle, freak from Tennessee, and Joshua Pryor, he's a D-lineman from Bowie State. All these guys show some potential to play somewhere all along the line. If I had to pick my favorites, it'd be the two Elijahs. Eliza Chapman from SMU and Elijah Simmons from Tennessee. Simmons might be my favorite. That guy just screams Vince Wilfork. Quarterbacks is arguably a need for the Patriots. Arguably. Perhaps not in the draft, but they could be looking at some of these high-priority UDFAs. I like Dorian Thompson-Robinson from UCLA, Tyson Bajan from Shepard, and Malik Cunningham from Louisville. Cunningham's a dynamic athlete. Thompson-Robinson is underrated, period. And... Tyson Bajan is a rough cut that could be polished into a gem in a couple years. All right, finally, special teams. The Patriots will need a punter and a kicker in this offseason. It's just something they have to do. They have two solid starters in Fulk and Allen, but the long-term outlook for those guys is uncertain. My top prospects include Andy Vajonovich, punter from Wisconsin, Anders Carlson, kicker from Auburn, Bryce Banger, punter from Michigan State, Jake Moody, kicker from Michigan. I'm not sold on using picks on these guys, but they are certainly top priority UDFA signings in my opinion. First off, I am aware the Patriots are not projected to have a fifth round pick. However, I believe several of my targets could go in the fifth, so I feel it's appropriate to put it in the title. On the other hand, it is possible that they make it to the sixth, where the Patriots are expected to have four picks early in the round. Then a late seventh comp pick. I have seen a few articles and media segments where analysts are claiming that this draft is quote unquote not deep and that they have to quote are struggling to create a top 100 board well i'll admit there are some weaknesses in the fourth and fifth rounds however i see a lot of opportunity in the sixth and seventh rounds to find some utility players and possibly some rough cuts awaiting to be polished plus the patriots have a strong history of finding and developing udfas that become nfl starters let's go over my favorites So my list is going to be essentially one player from each position group or um, position type. So for guard tackle, I have McClendon Curtis. My top slot receiver here is going to be Demario Douglas. My ex, my favorite X receiver is going to be Shaq Davis. Z receiver, I have uh, Xavier Allen as a Z receiver. Cameron Brown, fast corner. Julius Brents, big D back. Dijon Warren, nickelback. Deuce Vaughn, scat back. Kalan LeBorn, all purpose. Tavian Thomas, big back. Jack Coletto, fullback. Isaiah Land is my edge linebacker. Dylan Horton's my D end. 
BJ Thompson's my upright edge. Derek Parrish is my DN slash fullback. Kuntz is my big slot or H back. Luke Schoonmaker is my wide receiver slash inline. Muhammad Diabate is my outside linebacker. D Winters, linebacker edge. Titus Leo, box backer. Carlton Marshall, nickelbacker. Elijah Chapman, rush tackle. Elijah Simmons is my nose tackle. Dorian Thompson Robinson is a playmaker. Tyson Bajan, cannon. Andy Vujinovic, punter. Jake Moody, kicker. Some of these guys are draft picks and some of these guys are UDFAs. I suggest you take some time and look these guys up. It makes you realize how many solid NFL prospects are still there on day three and even after the draft. So there you have it, my final draft and UDFA targets for the Patriots. Again, I'm sure these will change after the NFL combine and as the team makes deals in free agency. What do you think of my lists? Which one would you pick? Did I miss anyone? Let me know in the comments.